If we're interested in fostering greater enactment of compassion, kindness, happiness for others, moral commitments, if that's what we're interested in, one way we foster that is we can reduce the internal friction against it. Okay, so we help people become less depressed, less internally preoccupied, uh, less caught up in addictions of various kinds. Just that is really helpful, Re releasing, reducing the internal friction to it. But it's certainly not sufficient. Second, we can help people literally develop greater trait compassion, trait kindness, trait commitment to social justice, trait lovingness, trait heartfeltness, trait open-heartedness. These are traits that we literally can develop one synapse at a time, one breath at a time, many little moments, eh, 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 gradually you know, steepening our own growth curve, our own learning curve over time. That's the second thing that's really good. But that's, again, not enough. Now, you, now it's there. There's not much internal friction. The warm-heartedness is really active in you. What helps you bring it out into the world? You know, love out loud, in effect. To that point, one thing that has really struck me is that, paradoxically, it actually can help people to be rested in an unconditional warm-heartedness if they make it increasingly in their own minds, a, in effect, independent of what other people do. And to use a metaphor of a kind of Wi-Fi base station that radiates in all directions, if people have a more and more a sense that their kindness, their compassion, their lovingness is about themselves, in effect, um, and it's less contingent on what other people do, then they move through the world from love. They're more lived by love. It's kind of omnidirectional, and people move through that field. And as people move through the field of the lovingness that's independent of what those other people do, we can also respond wisely. We can be, we can speak truth to power. We can distance ourselves from people that are harmful to us. We can call the police. We can enlist allies. We can disengage from no-win conversations. Uh, we can do all those things. Meanwhile, our, our lovingness for them is, is unconditioned. And I think of a friend of mine who spent some time in Southeast Asia, about nine years as a monk there. And uh, I asked him if he met anybody who was really enlightened, and he laughed. He said, well, in that culture, you watch people for years. But yeah, there are some people definitely who are really, 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 really far along. I said, what were they like? He said, well, they were, they were always the same. What do you mean? He said, well, sometimes they were quiet, sometimes they joked, sometimes they were serious, sometimes you know they were very practical, but they were always the same in this sense. If you were really nice to them, they really loved you. If you were really horrible to them, they really loved you. <laughs> Either way, <laughs> they, might, they might ask you to leave the monastery because you were growing marijuana in the jungle and that was uncool, et cetera, et cetera, or you, know, you were pilfering from the box, uh, not allowed to do that, but they wouldn't put you out of their heart. And so that, I think that's a very important thing, to rest in that sense of good-heartedness in a way that's not dependent on what people around you are doing.